folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. And today, I got my hands on something that's brand spanking new. And that is this guy right here, Zombicide Black Plague. Now, if memory will serve you correctly, this was one of my overrated games a few years ago. I heard that this was coming out, and I've been looking for it ever since because... It differentiates itself from all of the regular zombie games that are coming out. You know, we have, uh, well, you fill in the blank. There's so many of them that are just modern. They seem like, la, 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 la. Same thing, just a couple of different mechanics, fighting zombies in a modern or a post-apocalyptic era. This one goes even further back. This is back in medieval times. We're getting medieval, y'all. Uh, with Zombicide Black Plague, does that make a difference? Let me show you. Okay, in Zombie Side Black Plague, there are uh, rounds are split up in basically two phases. The first phase is the player's phase, where your heroes or your survivors can can do what they want to do, and then there's a zombie phase where the zombies activate and spawn in their spawn zones that are active. All right, so in your hero phase or your player's phase, uh, there are basically nine different things that you can do, and I know that sounds like a lot, but it actually isn't because it's very intuitive. First thing that you can do is you can move. So for one action point, you can move from one zone to another, but you cannot move diagonally. You would have to move orthogonally only. Then you can uh, search. So if you're inside a building uh, zone that has no zombies in it, you can perform a search action, which simply means you pull a uh, inventory card from the inventory deck, and then you see if you can use it, put it in your uh, backpack, whatever you want to do. The third thing that you're able to do is reorganize or trade. So these different cards that you're going to be having over the course of the game, you can reorganize them on your inventory thingamadoogie hopper, or you can give them to other people that are in the same zone that you are in, and they can uh, reorganize them for free. So that's an action that you can do there. You can also perform a, a combat action, which is either a melee action, where you are fighting in the same zone as another zombie, or you can take a uh, ranged combat action, which is from uh, either ranged actions can actually happen within the zone, as long as the ranged combat thing says a zero to one. So you, if it says zero, you can perform a ranged action uh, within the same zone, but normally you're going to be going from one zone to the next. Then you can also perform a magic attack action, which um, would of course require the use of a magic combat spell in order to do that. So, and then you would also follow the ranges and all that other kind of stuff as well. Then you can perform an enchantment action, but the enchantment is going to need to have a special enchantment card that will enable you to use that action. So there is that. And then you can also take or uh, an objective or activate an objective. It depends on what the quest or scenario is telling you to do. So if Baldrick here is in this zone, he could use an action to take this, and then it might give you experience points, it might give you a special item, or what have you. Then you can also make noise. Zombies are attracted to noise, if you, in case you didn't know that. And they're always attracted to the space that has the most noise. People are, are noise icons. And then whenever you are doing specific actions that cause noise, you're going to be adding noise tokens to the zone in which those activities took place. So um, you could make noise on purpose to try to draw zombies in your direction, maybe uh, helping protect somebody else because they'll move towards the noisiest location. So if there's one person here and uh, one person here, uh, or maybe two people here, um, this guy can cause a bunch of noise. And instead of this guy going here, because there's the most people here, he has caused a bunch of noise. And so this zombie would actually go here instead. And then the last thing uh, that you could do is nothing. Yes, that is actually a viable option. Then, after all of the heroes have taken, um, have taken their turns, the zombie actions would actually occur. All right, so the first thing that would happen is that zombies would, let's just say that this guy isn't here, the zombies would activate themselves. Zombies have one activation, except for runners, Runners actually have two activations. So uh, let's say this isn't here as well, and we have a, a runner right there. So a runner would be able to, during the zombie phase, the first one is attack or move. 
So they would be able to, since there's no heroes here to attack, he would activate one. Still no heroes to attack, he would activate two. Now, if there were heroes here, the runner would move one for his first activation and then attack with his second activation, causing an automatic wound. All other zombies and necromancers, if there's necromancers on the board, activate once. So the fatty here would only be able to move there. This zombie only has one activation, and that would be to move in. He would not then get an attack. Then zombies would spawn. You would spawn by drawing a zombie card and reading the row of the highest experience level in the group. As you can see down here on the bottom, you have blue, yellow, orange, and then red. So whoever's at the highest, for example, Baldrick here has a, is in the yellow experience, you would read the yellow line, which is one fatty. All right, so at that point, in this spawn zone, one fatty would be spawned right there. And then at the end, any noise tokens are removed, and it is the hero's phase. And the game continues until you finish what that quest, whatever quest it is that you're playing, uh, asks you to do. So, so Samson here being first. Um, now, here's the problem. We've got a fatty that is uh, cramping our style over here. And Samson is the only one with the weapon. Well... Baldrick does too, but Baldrick is way over here. One, two, three. It would take him three um, activations or actions just to get over there. So Samson is going to have to not worry about him and go here. And he's going to take a shot at that fatty. He's got two rolls. He, it took him one move to go in there. And now his second action is going to be a four plus, which it is. His hammer does two damage every time it scores a success, which is what the fatties take. So the fatty is dead. That gets um, Samson one victory, I'm um, sorry, one experience point there. Then he has an additional action. He'll, he'll try to knock out the runner as well, and he does. So that is another experience point for Samson. And that is the end of his ex activation. The uh, Baldric here to, we're going to disregard this. There's a reason for it. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Baldric just moved one, two, and three to get in here with the rest of them. Okay. Then uh, Silas is going to go one, two, try to open the door. And he gets it, which spawns that and that. Okay, so since there is an opening here, it reveals, this door opening reveals all of the rooms in that building. So we would spawn a card here and spawn a card here. So the first one here is a double spawn. So we would not actually spawn anything here, but we're going to spawn twice over here. So the next one is a double spawn. So that spawn is going to come over here for this zone. So the first one here is one fatty. Actually, that's the last one. There's one, one fatty in here. All right. So that was one. Two, open the door. Three will be to search because there are no zombies in that zone and he has a long bow so we're just going to put that in our our inventory for right now okay so that was one two three he is actually done nelly should have gone first so let's just say that this all happened same way uh it would have had to be a four plus to open the door uh, just like a, well, a three plus over here. So the six would have still opened it. That's an easy fix. So now it's Clovis's turn. I'm sorry, Silas's turn. Silas is going to come on in here uh, for one. For two, he's going to take a shot at this runner since he has line of sight. And it is one at two or higher because of his special ability of ranged combat. Adding one to the die. 
That's a miss. So that's his second one. And now his third attack hits. So the runner is toast, which gives him one victory point. I'm sorry, experience point. Keep on saying that. I'm an idiot. All of the people have gone now. So now zombies move. One, two. Now the reason I went ahead and did that is because I moved Baldrick in here. It's because I knew he wasn't going to be able to get, a, get an attack on either of them because he only has two activations. So it's one and then two. So he doesn't actually get to attack this round. But he will next round if he's still alive. Fatty over here moves one to that. Then we spawn here, but the double spawn actually occurs. So we go one, which puts another fatty, and two, which puts two walkers. Okay, so a fatty and two walkers comes right here. But this guy is really neat. When this came out and I started, uh, when I came out of the box and I started reading about how it's used, how they are slots for the different weapons that can be used, and then you have a backpack that has five slots in it so that the cards sit into it, and then these guys are how you track what abilities and your experience is down here. Man, this was a really, really cool, I guess kind of a gimmicky, but it's a functional gimmick. I really, really do enjoy this component of the game. It just makes the game pop that much more and it keeps the organization of your tableau so much easier. I will say though that um, if someone has difficulty with a steady hand, these can be problematic. I have actually witnessed that uh, to an extent in a couple of the games that I played. So cards that are in the game are so easy to read. These here tell you at what level that you can use this card in. Uh, being able to read the cards, for example, this means that it is it can be active even in your in, in your backpack. This is only active when it's in your hand. This is means that it, it's a dual weapon that can be used two-handed, um, ranged weapons or other kinds of inventory. These are really neat cards, and I like how they were laid out. Very simple. If you look at the card itself, this can open a door. You have to roll a die to do it. It will cause noise. Um, this is a melee weapon only, has no range. You get to roll five dice with a great sword, and you're looking for fives or sixes to score one hit. All right, so these inventory cards are just really neat. I like the, the iconography at the bottom. I like how it's very simple to understand. Uh, it's not difficult. It's actually intuitive what these cards say and how they read. So um, really liked the cards. The zombie cards, very simple to understand. This is what you spawn if the highest person is blue. Highest person is yellow, highest person is orange, highest person is red. So the more experience you get, the more difficult the game will be. Now I have to admit that um, I was excited for this game to come out. This is one of the games that I've been waiting to come out because I usually do like zombie games. The whole struggle between good versus evil and, and that type of stuff. So. When the first zombie side came out, it just didn't grab the hype that everybody was giving to it. And so I was kind of disappointed with it. I was let down by the original zombie side and I haven't really touched it since. And when I found out that this one was going to have that fantasy, medieval, uh, dark ages kind of feel to it, I was immediately, my, my interest was immediately piqued. I don't know when these different changes happened. Uh, and I don't know how many of the changes because frankly, I played Zombicide a long time ago, but somewhere along the way, Zombicide has grabbed my attention. That friendly fire thing, I really just don't like it. Um, I understand where they're, they're trying to go for a little bit of realism, where you know things happen. You're aiming at the zombie, but somebody moves in your way right after you pull the trigger, whatever. I got it, I get it, I still don't like it. But I'm just saying, 
With this one, I think they've provided a lot more workarounds. Um, I like the armor that comes in, and I know that probably was in, it seems like it would have been, I don't remember if it was or not, in the original game. And again, you might be saying, well, that was kind of the one thing that wasn't sitting well with you at the other one. I don't know what to say, guys. I really enjoy this game. One of the things that really helped it the most for me were these things right here. I really enjoy this. This is one of the things that makes it cool for me. Uh, the models, again, it's cool mini or not. What can you expect? Uh, nothing bad as far as minis are concerned from cool mini or not. These things don't even have the falling over looking like they're soft plastic type of thing at least not that i can tell um, the swords if you look at them they're all and, and and the staff and everything like that there's not really a huge bend to them as you've seen in other games um, they are just really good high definition models and they're begging for paint don't ask me that question because i'm not going there yet um, on top of that, the boards, nice, sturdy. I will say this, they're, they're warping a little bit, and I've only had the box open for less than a week. That's problematic. But again, you give them a little bit of a, uh, 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 and they're okay. The artwork on all of the different boards is phenomenal. Liked them all. Very uh, thematic, very neat, orderly, very nice looking. Can't say enough about the artwork. They just did a really good job. The only other thing that is kind of a weird thing with me is this, the, uh, the abominations. The abominations take three hit points to kill. There aren't any weapons that do three damage in one hit like they have to in order to kill something that has three hit points. All the other weapons that you have, the ones and the twos, they're just going to bounce off the guy. So in order to kill the abomination, a torch and dragon bile, you can kill an abomination. It's the only way you can kill an abomination in the core set of the game. So if you don't get this combination and you got an abomination on your board, good luck. You better run. Um, necromancers are actually pretty cool. They provide a little bit of a time um, stamp achievement to it because they don't always move toward the group. They want to show up and then exit the board so that they can go continue their nefarious planning uh, in some dark corner somewhere. So if there are six spawn zones, zombie spawning zones, including necromancer spawn zones, which come up when a necromancer shows up, and he exits the board, game's automatically over. All of this really, for me, um, puts together a pretty cool punch. I think the main thing that is drawing me to Zombie Beside Black Plague is the fact that it is a medieval setting, which is something that not a whole lot of other people are doing, if any at all. None that I've seen, at least, or remember. Two thumbs up from me, Zombie Beside Black Plague. If you enjoy the zombie side, the, the zombie genre, and you enjoy having a little bit of a twist with having magic spells in there and uh, uh, medieval style weapons and repeating crossbows and longbows and great swords and all of that kind of stuff, then this is something that you probably need to look seriously into getting. Um, I know I'm going to look into getting some of the other stuff that it has coming out with it. So that is Zombie Side Black Plague. Two thumbs up from me. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.